Okay, so I'm trying a different classroom because I know that the last video kind of blinked in and out. So hopefully this one will be a little bit better for you. And today, today's video is on section 10.3, circles. Our friends, the circles. Again, a geometry topic. This whole chapter is actually a geometry topic. Um, and we're going to be talking about graphing and writing equations of circles, which takes circles a little bit farther than you did last year. Um, so what's a circle? Well, I think you guys all know that this is a circle. Um, and I gave you the definition. A circle is the set of points that are equidistant from a fixed point called the center. So right there we put a dot. That's the center of our circle. And I can draw a line to the circle from anywhere from that center. No matter where I draw it, they'll all be equal. And those are called radius. So you might remember that from geometry, okay? All right, but what we're gonna talk about is the equation of a circle. So the standard form or the standard equation for a circle with a center at hk, there's that hk again that we've been working with when we've done graphs, and a radius of r is gonna look like this. x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. So the h and the k will be our, um, will be our center, and the r, not the r squared, but the r will be my radius. Now the thing with h and k, notice there's a minus in front of it, so whatever the sign is, it's going to be change, 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 okay? And I'll show you some examples of that when we get to it, okay? All right, so how are we going to use it? Well, first of all, let's talk about what if the radius, what if the center was the origin? If the center was the origin, I'm going to write this. So hk is the origin. Well, then it would be x minus 0, which is going to just be x squared, plus y minus 0, which is just going to be y squared equals r squared. So when you see a circle in this form, it's actually easier because right off the bat, you can tell me that the origin is the center. All right, so let's write an equation, real easy one. A circle has a center of 0, 0, so the origin, and a radius of 3. What's its equation in standard form? Okay, so you just go right up to the equation, and I'm going to actually go through it each time so that we get into a habit of it because not all our circles are going to have uh, centers at the origin. x minus 0 squared plus y minus 0 squared equals my radius squared. Simplify it, again, down to x squared plus y squared equals 9. And there is the equation of a circle. Okay? All right. This can get a little bit harder. Um, I can ask you to work backwards and draw a circle given an equation. So the first thing I always want you to be careful of is that this is not your radius, that is r squared. So you always need your center to graph it and a radius. Okay, and looking at this equation, there's no numbers, there's no hk in there, so then I know that the center is the origin. To find my radius, I'm, it's r squared is 25, so then r would be 5. We're only going to look at the positive square root. So I've got my radius, I've got my center, I'm going to plot my center, and I'm actually just going to go along the axis, because I know there's, where 5 is, right, over here is negative 5, and down here is negative 5, just kind of make it, and I'm just going to do my best sketch. That should be where my circle kind of goes. doesn't really look like a circle, but I tried my best on it. Smartboard doesn't do, do that best job. All right, so what can we do next? I can make this harder because I could say, write an equation of a circle, okay? Given some information. The one thing I want you to always remember is that in order to write an equation of a circle, you need the center and you need a radius. So this question says, the point one four is on a circle whose center is the origin. All right, so I have my center. I have my hk, 0, 0. I need, but I don't see a radius. So I'm actually going to draw this for myself. Here's what I've got going on. I've got the point 1, 2, 3, 4, okay? I have this point somewhere on the circle, okay? Something like that. And I know the center is right here. 
So how can I find the radius with that information? Well, I want you to think back to 10-1, what we just did on the distance formula. This right here is a radius, okay? So if I can find the distance, then I've got my r, okay? So if I know that this point right here is 0, 0, and I know that this point right here is 1, 4, I'm going to use those two points and I'm going to plug them into the distance formula to find the, dis the radius. So my distance formula is d equals 1 minus 0 squared, so x2 minus x1 squared, plus, again, I'm, it's plus in the middle because it's like the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared, 4 minus 0 squared. I'm going to add and do my math here. So 1 minus 0 is 1, 1 squared is 1. 4 minus 0 is 4, 4 squared is 16. So my distance is root 17. Okay, so I know my radius then is root 17. So now I go back to my equation of a circle, x minus h squared, x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared, and I plug in that, that information that I have. My center is um, the origin, so it works out to be x squared plus y squared. And my r is root 17, but remember, I have to square it, so be very careful here, okay? So my final equation, x squared plus y squared equals, when I square a square root, what happens? It goes away, so it would be 17, okay? All right, so now I want you guys to try. I give you an easier example, but I want you to be able to do both. Write an equation of a circle with a radius of 4 root 5 and whose center is the origin. Okay, so again, we're going to use R, and I'm doing, writing it out for you again. x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals R squared. When you're writing an equation, you're always going to need that standard form. I'm told that the center is the origin, so I know that now I have x squared plus y squared. All right, and my radius is 4 root 5. So it equals 4 root 5. What do I need to do to that? I need to square it. And I want you to be very careful. I always want you to put it in parentheses. Okay? And the reason I want you to do that is because look what could happen here. When you raise it to the 2 power, you've got to remember that 2 belongs to the 4. So I have to square the 4. And I also have to square root 5. So 4 squared is 16. 5 squared is or root 5 squared is just 5, and so 16 times 5 is going to give me 80. So my equation of my circle is x squared plus y squared equals 80. Okay? The only way I can make that harder is giving you a center that's not the origin. What if I gave you, and I'll just do it off here on the side, what if I gave you the center as, I don't know, 2, 3? Well, all you do is plug it in. So the equation's gonna look slightly different. I would have put in then x minus two squared, we'll say it's the same radius, plus y minus three squared equals 80. So it looks different, it just has the, the hk in there, okay? And remember, hk is always change, change. So see the difference between the center and what it looks like in the equation, okay? All right, let's move on. Now, I'm hoping that you remember a couple of things about from geometry about circles. We're going to be talking about a circle, but we're also going to be talking about a special line that touches the circle, okay? This line's called a tangent line. I'm hoping you remember that from geometry. Okay, so in geometry, this was a tangent line. It's a line that touches a circle one place on the outside. It doesn't go through it. And the one thing you guys should have learned is that if you draw a radius to a tangent, it creates a right angle, so it's perpendicular, okay? All right, so we're gonna actually need to use that to help us write some different equations. So let's look at an example. You can find an equation of a line in what you know, with what you know about circles. So we're gonna write an equation of the line that is tangent to the circle, x squared plus y squared equals 13 at the point 
two, three. Okay. Well, I'm not going to be all crazy accurate here, but I am going to I am going to put the point two, three on the graph. Okay. So I know a circle is going through that point. So I'm going to do my best to um, to draw a circle. Okay. And it's saying that I have a line that's tangent to the circle at that point. So I'm going to draw it in. Okay. And since it's at x squared plus y squared, I know that my center is the origin. Okay? Alright, now it wants me to write an equation of this line. Alright, so in order to write an equation of a line from yesterday, from 10-1, you guys know you need a point and a slope. Okay, do I have a point on this line? Yes, I do. I've got the point 2-3. So what am I missing? I'm missing my slope, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to think about this for a second, but if I know that I draw a radius to that tangent, I create a perpendicular, then I know if I find the slope of this segment, then I can take the negative reciprocal slope for this line. And I have enough information to find the slope of this segment. I know this point is 0, 0. I know this point is 2, 3. So I'm going to use my slope equation, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. All right, so oops, drop my pen. Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, so 3 minus 0 over 2 minus 0 is going to give me 3 halves. OK, so the slope of the blue line is 3 halves. So the slope I need, I need the negative reciprocal. And what's the negative reciprocal of 3 halves? It would be negative 2 thirds. Okay? All right, so now I have my point. I have my slope. I can use the point-slope equation. y minus y1 equals mx minus x1. And remember, I told you, I really want you to get in the habit of using point-slope versus slope-intercept because you're going to use this a little bit more next year in pre-calc. And we're getting very close to pre-calc because you guys only have about eight weeks left of school. All right, so plug in the values I have. So y minus 3 equals negative 2 thirds x minus 2. Okay? All right, if you didn't use point slope, um, what it should work out to be, your equation should work out to be y equals negative 2 negative two-thirds x plus 13 thirds. So look at those fractions. That doesn't make a fun, okay? All right, so we're almost done. I want you to try now. I want you to try to find the equation of a tangent line that is tangent to the circle with the equation x squared plus y squared equals 5 at the point 2, 1. So I'm going to ask you to pause the video here and go ahead and try that problem, okay? And when you come back, I'll put the answer up on the board, and if you have questions on it, we'll go over it in class um, tomorrow. All right, so while you're trying that, I'm going to write the answer up on the board for you. The answer should be y minus 1 equals negative 2 x minus 2. Okay, and don't think you can just write the answer down, because I am going to be looking for work when I come around to check your homework tomorrow, okay? All right, why does this all matter? What are we going to, where are we ever going to use this? Well. You know, there's lots of places that circles come in handy. Circles are in architecture. Circles are in um, anything that's related to the ocean, anything that's related to design, construction. But, so mechanical engineering. There's all kinds of places, city planning. But I'm going to look at an equation um, or something that might make sense to you guys. The beam of a lighthouse can be seen for up to 20 miles. You're on a ship that is 10 miles east and 16 miles north of the lighthouse. Can you see the beam of the lighthouse? Well, so let's think about this. We're going to pretend for a second that the origin is the lighthouse, okay? So I'm just going to put myself right here. I'm going to use the quarter plane to help me, all right? And I know that I can see 20 miles around that circle. So I have this, um, and let's do this, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Okay, so it is the end of my circle. So I'm basically saying, if I change the scale here, that I, if I'm at that lighthouse, 
I can see my beam shines anywhere here. And the question is asking me, well, if I'm at 10 miles east and 16 miles north of the lighthouse, can I see it? Okay. Well, my diagram is not to scale, but think about it. If I'm 10 miles east, so 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and then 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, right about there. So I'm really close to that circle that you know, my line is drawn. But how could I absolutely be 100% certain? Well, if I draw a radius, it kind of goes by that point. Oops, sorry. If I know the length of the radius and the radius is less than that distance, wouldn't I have to be able to see it? Does that make sense to everyone? Um, so if I can find my radius and my radius is less than 20, okay, because that point 10, 16 is inside the circle, then I know for sure that I can see the beam of light from where I'm standing. And we're going to talk about this tomorrow. Um, and I'm going to actually show it to you tomorrow. But um, if you work out the distance formula, it works out to be that the radius is r root 356, so about 18, OK? About 18, um, 18 and a half. So, and we're going to go from there. And so I want you to make sure you bring your notes tomorrow. We'll talk more about this tomorrow, OK? All right, hope that was helpful. And we'll see you tomorrow. Bye.